Hello biology class. We are back with lesson four of the respiratory system. This is the lower respiratory system part two. As you can see from the big part on your screen and from the title down below that stays there forever. Um, the lower respiratory system again is essentially the part that's in your chest. And we're talking about part two. We are going to focus on the lungs. Uh, the parts of your lungs that actually facilitate gas exchange or oxygen going in and CO2 going out, and then what exactly that process is, which is key point three. So key point one, we're gonna start with the lungs and talk about those for a little bit. The lungs are the primary organs of the respiratory system in humans. When we talk about the respiratory system, you think lungs, that makes sense. Their function in the respiratory system is to extract oxygen from the atmosphere and transfer it in the bloodstream. Alternatively, we can say that their job is to um, extract CO2 from the bloodstream and expel it into the atmosphere. Uh, humans have two lungs, a right lung and a left lung, which are situated which in, within the thoracic cavity of the chest. So you have your chest cavity and you have your uh, abdominal cavity, the lungs and the heart are all within the thoracic or chest cavity. Uh, we have two lungs. They are slightly different sizes. Um, yeah, and then so in lungs, uh, so in humans, the main muscle uh, of respiration that drives breathing is the diaphragm. So that is essentially the separator of the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity. It is a piece of muscle that stretches this way from the front of you to the back of you and it connects all around. There are holes in it to allow for your esophagus to go through uh, and different arteries and veins to go through, um, but it's essentially a muscle that goes all the way across. Uh, the lungs are part of the lower respiratory tract that begins at the trachea and branches into the bronchi, which divides into alveolar ducts. So alveolar ducts are right before we get to alveoli, which we are going to talk about. So the alveoli duct, alveolar ducts uh, uh, give rise to alveolar sacs that contain alveoli. We will get into what they are there. Look like grapes, essentially. And alveoli is the place where gas exchange takes place. It is the site of gas exchange. So there may be a question like that. Uh, it's something that you probably um, will kind of remember is that alveoli is the site of gas exchange. It is part of the lungs. So we have two pictures. We have clean lungs and we have dirty lungs from smoking. You can also see how much larger the heart is and how much smaller the lungs are compared to the healthy part here, small heart and big lungs. That's what you want. So why does the right lung have more lobes than the left lung? Um, let's see. If we look at even this picture here, uh, we can see one, two, and then a smaller lobe even down here for the right lung, while the left lung only has one, two within it. You can kind of see the line more definitively here um, for the two lobes of the left lung. And the reason that is, the reason the right lung has three lobes while the left lung only has two, is because the heart takes up a significant amount of space in your chest. So your lungs are asymmetrical. Your lungs have, are larger on the right and smaller on the left just because your heart takes up a bunch of space. Alveoli, key point two. So alveoli are in the alveoli sacs. Um, they are essentially look like grapes, uh, kind of like this right here. So each one of these tiny things is an alveoli, little tiny sacs of grapes. This is where gas exchange take place. Um, the alveolar membrane is the gas exchange surface and they are completely surrounded by a network of capillaries which are tiny blood vessels, which you learned in the last unit. A typical pair of human lungs contains about 300 million alveoli. So they are very, very tiny and there are tons of them. So, and this increases the surface area, just like the villi do in your um, intestines. Uh, alveoli increase the surface area um, as much as they can so that we can drag in as much oxygen as possible. So we have the lung here, and then it breaks off, each uh, bronch, uh, bronchi breaks off into different smaller ones, smaller ones, smaller ones, till we get alveoli at the end where gas exchange takes place, or that's where we bring in the oxygen and get rid of the CO2. 
So here we can see kind of the end part of it. We would have lung essentially all filling this part up and you can see all these blood vessels that come uh, around it. So these little sacs increase the surface area and oxygen can flow out of this into the blood vessels and then be taken out to our body so that it can be used. So I always think of them as little sacks of grapes and you can kind of see them sticking off uh, each portion of the tinier and tinier bronchioles. So alveoli are only one cell thick. Why is this? To make This is to make it as easy as possible for oxygen to move through during gas exchange. So one cell is as thin as you can get and then it's as easy as it can get for oxygen to move through it. Um, capillaries are also only one cell thick to make it as easy as possible. So the alveoli are covered in these capillaries because this is where the oxygen needs to go to diffuse and go to uh, and where CO2 diffuses from. So oxygen needs to go there to be taken to the rest of the body. And CO2, our waste material, comes from the capillaries. So we need to be close to them so, we, so that we can exhale it. It is really an amazing system when you think about it, how intricate it is, um, how specific it is, and how much of beating it can, really can take. People can smoke for many, many years and still be able to intake oxygen. Um, not at a great rate, but are still able to function. And it's very amazing how our body is able to kind of regulate that and make sure that that is occurring. So key point three, what is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of gases down their concentration gradient. So they move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So when we breathe in, there is oxygen within the air and there is not oxygen in our blood cells. So that means we're bringing oxygen from the air into our blood. That is diffusion from high concentration in the air towards low concentration in your blood. And eventually, if you were just to leave it there, that would all cancel out. It is like when someone sprays some ax on one side of the room, that ax will diffuse through the air to the other side until it is completely um, equally concentrated throughout the room. And then you could kind of smell it as it moves past. That is diffusion. So there is lots of oxygen in the air and in the alveoli. It moves into the blood because there's not much oxygen in the blood when it comes to the lungs. There is lots of carbon dioxide in the blood. So then it moves into the alveoli space and then out through the lungs because there's less of it in that area. So diffusion works both ways. It drags oxygen into your body and it pulls CO2 out of your body. So here's how diffusion works. The blue arrows are oxygen. So you can see in the alveoli, we have much more oxygen than we do in the blood vessel. That will make the O2 move into the blood vessel so it can be carried away. This is the capillary. We have way more CO2 in the capillary than we do in the alveoli. That means these dark blue lines will push CO2 into the alveoli, where it will then be expelled through our lungs and our mouth into the atmosphere. So diffusion pushes oxygen into the capillaries uh, because of its concentration gradient, high in the alveoli and low in the blood, and CO2 works the opposite. It is high in the blood and low in the alveoli, so it pushes it into that space so it can be exhaled. Very, very important to be able to explain exactly how this works. So what determines gas exchange? Uh, it is essentially the partial pressure gradient of gases. So it's not how many different particles there are, but it's specific to that particle. That's why it matters more that there's a lot of oxygen in here and not that there are more particles in general. Each type of particle will move away from high concentration on its own. It is not about the number of particles overall, it is the types of particles. So the steeper this gradient, the more rapid the rate of gas transfer. So that's why when you inhale pure oxygen, the gas transfer into your lungs is higher because this gradient is steeper. You have more oxygen in your lungs. Gas exchange um, surface area also determines um, how fast this can go. If you have more surface area, you have more gas exchange. Uh, the available exchange surface area uh, decreases as you have lung diseases like emphysema, or COPD, or um, even viral infections like COVID-19. 
So gas exchange increases with surface area. The more surface area you have, the more gas exchange you have. The less surface area you have, the less gas exchange you have. Um, that's why it's important to keep your lungs healthy, to keep as much surface area as you can throughout your entire life. Uh, another thing that determines gas exchange is the thickness of the alveolar capillary interface. So if they are each one cell thick, gas exchange can happen very quickly. But if they're thicker than that, it happens slow. So the diffusion gradient opposes gas um, diffusion, and this worsens in disease when you have more water, pus, mucus, cystic fibrosis stops um, oxygen from moving through. When you have thicker parts between there, you can't have oxygen moving in and CO2 moving out. Um, we also have the diffusion coefficient of each type of gas, and it just so happens that CO2 is 20 times easier to diffuse than oxygen. Each gas is different, so oxygen concentrations have to be lower in the blood and higher in the alveoli to allow it to move, or CO2 seems to be able to move through very easily, even if there's a low concentration gradient. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to fill in the blanks for emphysema. The website is given on the Your Job sheet. Um, there are a few different tabs that you may need to visit, but all the information is there. And then there's a separate respiratory failure research uh, set of questions that I'd like you to do that are not involved with that um, particular uh, website. After you're done those, please study up and write quiz number one. So quiz number one covers lessons one through four. Essentially the structure and function of the respiratory system, we're gonna get into a few more um, different situations um, different factors that can affect your lungs, how exactly, exactly you breathe, and get a little more detailed in some future lessons here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, other than that, I will see you in class soon, and uh, have a good one.